Welcome to this tutorial where I will show you how you can send telemetry from your plane or drone to a ground control station over the internet using 4G or LTE connectivity. Here you can see the overview of the system we will be implementing. On the left we have the UAV, the drone or the plane you are using. And on the bottom right we see the ground control station, which can be a laptop, a tablet or your phone even. And to implement the system we need a server in between those two to enable the communication. So I've created a short list of things you would need to recreate my system. You should have a ground control station. We also will need a server with a public IP and a board computer, which can be, for example, a Raspberry Pi Zero, which I will be using. Also, the Raspberry Pi will need to be able to connect to the internet, which can be done via a LTE USB or a 4G head. Some examples will be listed in the description below. The video is divided into three sections. At first, we will connect the Raspberry with the internet. After that, we will install and config Mevlink router. And at last, we will set up and service, so the connection is automatically started when booting up. To provide the Raspberry with an internet connection, I'm using an LTE USB. The LTE USB needs a SIM card, and you have to keep in mind that you also need a data plan, so that you can connect to the internet. To connect it to the Raspberry, I'm using an USB extension. As an alternative, you could use an 4G head like this one, which gives you a bit more functionality and customizability. To check the internet connection of the Raspberry, we'll SSH into it and then look at the available connections via ifconfig. Without the USB connected, we can see our Wi-Fi connection. After connecting the USB, and then running ifconfig, we can now see the USB connection. To see if the USB 0 interface connects us with the internet, we can ping Google. To send telemetry data over the internet, we will be using Mevlink router, which we have to install on both the Raspberry and the server. For that, we will SSH into the, our Raspberry Pi, I have cleanly installed Raspberry OS, so you can follow along with the actions shown on the screen. We will need git on our system to clone the Mevlink uh, router repository and then install it on our Raspberry Pi.
To now use Mapping Router, your Raspberry Pi has to be connected to your flight controller. For more information on how to connect your Raspberry Pi with the flight controller, please look at the autopilot documentation. When connected, please make sure that the UART port you are using is correctly set up. The Raspberry Zero port isn't enabled by default, so we have to open Raspberry Config and enable the port. After rebooting the Raspberry and reconnecting with it, we will now create the config file for Mefflink Router. This config file defines where Mefflink Router will send data by default. If you already have a server set up, here you can already input the server IP. To now test Mefflink Router, you will need a server that is up and running. Personally, I use Amazon Web Services and created an EC2 instance running Ubuntu. I will not show how to set up an Amazon Web Server instance, since you can use any server provider you want, or maybe have your own server or something. So, if you need one, look at, the, look at other tutorials on YouTube, and then come back to this point. Before continuing, make sure that your server allows incoming data traffic by any UDP source in any port range. If you use Amazon Web Services like me, it should look like this. Mathlink Router also has to be installed on the server, so you can repeat the same process as for the Raspberry. You just don't have to create a config file for the server. The command to execute Mufflink Router is Mufflink Router with a D at the end. You can then define where Mufflink Router sends your data with dash E, which uses the UDP protocol, or dash T, which uses the TCP protocol. For this demonstration, I will use the public IP of my server. When specifying the UDP port to which the data will be sent, Make sure that the UDP port selected is the same for the Raspberry and the server. After pressing enter, we can see that the server is receiving messages and sending them to an unknown endpoint. This endpoint has been defined in the mafflink rooted command, which you can see is min minus t5761. So the TCP port 5761 is now receiving those messages. Using a ground control software, we can now connect to the TCP port 5761 and receive the data from our flight controller. As you can now see, the ground control software is receiving data from the flight controller and the server shows a TCP connection accepted. Now we will set up the auto connect on startup 
since we don't want to execute mufflink root dot every time we plug in the battery to our airplane. At first I'm updating the config file for mufflink router with the new IP address for our public server. If you have done this you don't have to input dash e followed by the IP address every time you use mufflink router. Now we will create a bash file which will have the command mufflink router in it so we can execute it later. The following command makes router config.sh executable. Now we will create a service which will run every time this Raspberry Pi boots up. I'm now going to paste something in, which you can find in the description below. The top of this file describes the service, and under service we can see exec start pre, which tests if the Raspberry Pi is connected to the internet. After that we have exec start, which will then execute the router config.sh file. Under reset we have set always and reset sec for 10. This means that the script will always try to reset itself and do so after 10 seconds each. Using system control we can now start this uh, service and then if it's working we can enable it so that it starts every time the Raspberry boots up. When checking the status of the service you should see a green active and the output of the bash script on the bottom. To test the whole system I've connected the Raspberry with the flight controller and the LTE USB. After that I'm gonna connect the battery with the flight controller so the Raspberry Pi gets powered up. As you can see, the connection has been established after about two minutes. Thank you for watching and I hope this tutorial helped you. If you have any questions, I am happy to answer anything in the comments below.